What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about the trailer of the documentary Profiled the Black Man by Chena Knowles Lawson and a young man named Trail Thomas, who is someone that Tina Lo Tina knows Lawson mentors. And you know, people all over black social media have been speaking about this documentary. Saying some nice things and some not so nice things. And I've been hearing more so not so nice things, more so the nice things about the documentary. Or at least the subject matter of the documentary. Before I get into my commentary and my personal thoughts and opinions about all this, I do want to give a few disclaimers. I have nothing against Tina Knowles Lawson or her family. I have only watched the trailer for the documentary. I don't have access to watch the actual episodes. Therefore, I have not seen all four parts to this documentary. Also, in terms of Tina, Lo Tina Knowles Lawson's race and racial classification, I personally view her as a black identified Louisiana Creole. Perhaps the mixture is multi-generational. I'm thinking so if she's Creole. I don't think she's first generation mixed. But at the very least, she is black adjacent. That's why she's making this documentary, right? Let's be real. So... Those are my disclaimers, and we've got that out of the way. Now let's get into this, all right? We're going to have a little bit of fun, but I also speak on some real stuff here. So, you know, Tina knows Lawson, a.k.a. Beyonce's mama. You know, she got a documentary, and it centers around black men and, you know, the stereotypes of black men and some of the issues that black men deal with. Some people, particularly some black women, accuse Tina No Lawson of engaging in black male worship. You know, being a uh, mammy mule. And just ultimately pandering to black men. And I'll say, I, I wonder, I do wonder what inspired... Uh, Tina to make this documentary and in one of the interviews that I saw um, I believe it was her interview she did with Gail King um, she said that this was supposed to be a love letter to black men so some people may view that as being black male worship which you know that is a red flag for me you know but just from that phrase alone, you know, love letter to black men, like really when you think about it, it's like, you know, right there already, we know that this documentary is not going to be something that's holding black men accountable. And if there is some accountability, you know, it's going to be like one small segment of it. It's not going to be the mode of the documentary. Because if she did do that, then, yeah, there'll be a lot of conversations on black social media spaces. But it's going to be primarily black men leading those conversations, saying that Tina is a black male basher. And basically, we got to get at her. And, you know, Tina, she don't want that smoke. She, you know, she too old for that smoke. So she ain't trying to go down that road. Um, but from what I viewed from the trailer, um, the trailer was maybe about around two minutes 
a little less, a little bit more, around there, around two minutes, right? But basically what I'm getting from the trailer is, you know, the system is against the black man. The white man fears the black man. The black woman sabotages the black man. The known and unknown universe is against the black man. Everybody want to keep the black man down. The black man. The black man. And the black man. But I could be wrong. But that is the vibe that I'm picking up. That's the vibe that I'm getting. I feel like this documentary is going to say and say what is deemed acceptable to say. Because, you know, it's some things that we know we ain't supposed to say, even though we know it's the real, it's the true. But, you know, like, mm, you know, we can't say that. No, uh, you know, if you say that, you're going to offend some people. You're going to offend our kings if you say that. Don't say that. You can't say that about our kings. And really, I feel like this documentary is going to be what the documentaries Dark Girls and Light Girls was for black women. You know, this documentary is going to be that for black men. You know, how the dark skinned girls and the light skinned girls and, you know, the black women in general talked about their experiences with colorism. This documentary is going to just be having a whole bunch of black men talking about their experiences with racism. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Black men and black women do have a right to speak on their black experiences. Definitely. I'm not trying to take that away or belittle that or downplay that in any way. But I feel like folks are going to be a little extra with the victimhood for a little bit of attention, a little bit of shine, a little bit of spotlight, a little bit of camera time. You know, they're going to hype it up for the cameras. And I do hope that the black men who are speaking in this documentary are with black women in their personal lives. It's something to think about. And I know somebody going to come through and be like, it don't matter. That don't matter. They ain't got to be with no black woman. People are always trying to police what the black man do. Who the black man date. Who the black man create a family with. I always trying to believe the black man. But, hey. I said what I said, alright? But, I could go on for a minute for that. But I'm going to move on to the next thing. Um... Who do you think this documentary is for, exactly? And when I say that, I mean, like, who is the target audience? We know that this documentary is supposed to be, like, a love letter to black men, per Tina Knowles, and also helping, you know, debunk some stereotypes, right? But who do you think this documentary is actually targeted toward in terms of target audience, right? And I think primarily the target audience is non-black people. I believe Tina also said in an interview that she was happy that uh, Discovery picked up the documentary and they're going to be airing it on Discovery. Because she had mentioned that, oh, you know, when it comes to like, you know, the black channels like BT, et cetera, et cetera, like, oh, we already know that black men aren't this, black men aren't that, black men are this, black men are that, etc. So, basically, I feel like this documentary is geared towards non-black folks. So, obviously, there is concern of non-black people's opinion and views in regards to black men. And I do feel like ultimately it is a factor. 
since we do live in a country that is not just black people. And I'm referring to the United States when I say that. I know that I may have some people who may watch my videos and content who are from um, other countries. So I do want to clarify, just in case you may not know that, you know, I'm a Yank. <laughs> a Yankee, right? But I also feel like this documentary is going to be very big with um, black male worshipping black women. Um, and I feel like for some reason, while I do feel like the target audience is non-black people, I feel like this documentary is going to be watched majority by black people, especially black women, or particularly black women. Right? Because you already know what you already know the song that black women, like these black women are gonna be singing out here. You know, I got a black son, child. I got a black brother, girl. My baby daddy black, my daddy black, my granddaddy black. Girl, my Uber driver is a black king, girl. My Amazon Prime delivery guy is a black man like no other. Mm, can I get an amen? We all know the song that some black women love to sing. Although I do not really hear black men singing a equivalent song like that about black women. And black men seemingly tend to individually individualize the women in their family like the black women in their family and not saying that oh every black woman is like his mom his sister his aunt grandmama daughter baby mama wife etc 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 um but in regards to this documentary um what is it going to say that has not already been said you know, is this documentary really going to break any new ground, innovate on anything, present something brand new? Like, you know, or is it just going to be rehashing some stuff that we really already know? Just saying. Uh, another thing that, you know, in terms of my grievances with this documentary, um, one major thing that I do have an issue with is... Um, the coddling, the black male coddling that I feel like this documentary pushes. Like, oh, black men are victims. Black men, um, you know, they go through so much. Um, black men have it tough. Therefore, nothing is their fault and they should not be held accountable for anything. And I do have a problem with that because it ruins black men and ultimately the black community. Not holding people accountable for the things that they do is not good. Like even like on an individual level, if you were raising your child and you never held your child accountable for anything bad that he or she did, do you think that your child is going to grow up to be a, a responsible, productive adult? Probably not. The same applies to the collective when it comes to black men. And, you know, I also want to put put out here that in some cases black men do play a role in perpetuating these negative stereotypes too and Tina she did an interview on CBS and the talk show the fake I'm sorry I meant the real yeah the real all right y'all ain't been real since Tamar left and that's the fakest show on TV but Tina she spoke about this run-in she had with a white woman on an airplane. 
And the white woman asked her, how could she allow her daughter to marry a gangster rapper? And Tina, she replied, saying that he's actually a CEO. And which is true, but, and before I go into this, I do want to give a bit, well, uh, clarify, right? Tina don't know Tina does not owe this white woman any sort of exclamation in regards to who her daughter dates and marries. That's none of her business and she should not have even asked her that question. And Tina knows probably should have slapped her for asking that question too. But I know she don't want to catch a lawsuit and get caught up in some legal drama. So what I'm about to say is more so you know, for amongst, you know, us black folk, right? Amongst the community, right? Amongst black people, right? And I'll say this. Jay-Z, you know, he rode that gangsta rap wave to the bank, right? That's how he came into the industry. And I think he was like, before that, um, like, he was a drug dealer at one point, too. So, it's like, well, you use that to get in and to make your money, but then when folks associate you with that, then it's a problem. It's like, oh, no, well, you know, I used to do that, but now I'm this. And it's like, well, yeah, but, you know, just because you're a CEO, it doesn't necessarily cancel out your past as a drug dealer against a rapper. And I don't think that's something that people should be like lambasted for bringing up. But of course, when it comes to black men, it's like, oh, well, we shouldn't concentrate on that every Every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. Basically, black men's past don't matter. The here and now only matters. That's it. Another major problem that I have with this with this documentary is that it portrays black men. I don't know if this is on purpose. I don't think it is. I'm I'm going to say it's, I don't think it's on purpose, but nevertheless, it's happening. It's portraying black men as essentially victims, like weak victims. You know, especially when you show that like footage of black men being accosted by the police. And I'm not trying to say that that's not a thing or that doesn't happen or that those black men don't deserve advocacy if they are innocent of any wrongdoing or perhaps, you know, victims of police brutality, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not saying that. Um, but I'm saying that this documentary, it does end up seemingly well, based on the trailer, because I haven't seen it, right? But based on what is being put out there, it's it's seemingly portraying black men as being victims. Which is a portrayal that many non-black people are comfortable with, by the way, which is very important. And they're comfortable with it because it's non-threatening and it puts people at ease. You know, seeing images of black men being, you know, attacked and brutalized and subdued, that puts non-black people at ease. You know, the ones who have issues with black men. But imagine if we had more images of black men being, you know, positive, like some more positive imagery of black men. You know, not black men being on some coon-ish, like, you know, Terry Crews and Kevin Hart, you know, and not black men being on some pro-black swirl world-ish, you know, like Shannon Sharp or Van Jones. But I'm talking about, like, images of black men and black women in happy, healthy, well-functioning relationships and marriages. You know, black fathers being present in their children's lives. 
you know, black men in tech, black men owning businesses, black men being CEOs, building communities and infrastructure, right? Positive imagery like that, whether it is actually happening or it's just happening in like movies, television, books, what have you. And I know some people going to come through and be like, well, you know, that's respectability politics there. And that's a no. Black people should not be engaging in respectability politics. And you should not be trying to appeal to the right ways. Because that is steeped in racism and white supremacy. And there is some truth in that. But... Imagery is very important. Notice that the media, it is, it functions a certain way. And they make sure to show certain images and to not show certain images. Because, you know, when it comes to the media, especially like television and like mainstream television... There's a thing called the FCC, and they make sure that certain images are not shown for a particular reason, all right? But in terms of that respect politic thing, it's like, I do think, again, there is some truth in that, right? But I do feel like some of y'all are more comfortable with ghetto ratchet hood imagery, of black men and black women versus like the imagery that I want to that I had um just previously talked about and I, for some reason I feel like people feel like the ghetto ratchet hood imagery is more like quote unquote black in which for many black people it is relatable and I think that is something that has to be addressed um, but I do feel that um, black men and black women are comfortable, very comfortable with ghetto ratchet hood imagery. Not all, but enough. So uh, long story short, we ain't going nowhere with positive black imagery anytime soon. But in terms of those potential images, black men can put out those images. Black men do have some agency to put out positive imagery. I don't think black men care to put out positive imagery because it's not considered, like some of it, a lot of it is not considered quote unquote cool. So I think that's an issue. And I know somebody's going to come through and be all like, well, um, black men don't control the media. Uh, black men don't control... Uh, Netflix, black men don't control YouTube, black men don't control uh, uh, Twitter, uh, black men don't control, you know, uh, what goes on television. And, you know, there's some truth in that. Um, but black men do have something, right? Black men do have some say in some things. And at the end of the day, it's black man's job to prioritize the black man's image and to make it positive or to improve upon the imagery. Because, let's be real, it's not non-black people's job to promote black men in a positive light. That's not their job. Granted, they don't have to promote black men in a negative light, and that should we can address that. But it's also not their job to promote black men in a positive light either. Black men have to do that for themselves. Also, another thing that I want to bring up is where is the black female equivalent of this documentary? The closest thing that I can think of at this moment is the documentary Good Hair by Chris Rock. And some black women had some issues with that documentary, by the way, too, because they felt like they didn't he didn't tell the whole story. He only just he just got to the point where black women hate they hair, black women hate they sell, black women wanna be non black women and white women. And that's that. 
But is a documentary like this about black women, um, is it not of interest? Is it not marketable? Do we not feel that it, there is a need for it? Because I feel like people, or at least Tina no loss, uh, Lawson felt like it was a need for this documentary. And also, like, do we not want to see black women as victims who need advocacy? Because that's something that I think is maybe going unnoticed, too. Because while they're victimizing black men, because uh, black male victims are palatable to um, non-black people who don't like black men, um, notice that they're not trying to portray black women as victims and um, worthy and needing advocacy. And I think that's because we, I, I feel like the systems that be, the powers that be, they don't want people to view black women, black women as victims because it may end up working in black women's favor to be seen as victims versus black men's favor. Like what I'm saying is the victimhood works better for black women than it does black men. And I feel like because of that, they're trying to push the victimhood on black men versus black women. For black women, they'll be pushing that, you know, she's strong, she black, she independent. Who is she? The black queen, baby. She can do anything. She can take a licking and keep on ticking. She can hold a black family together single-handedly. She don't need a man. She don't need a man for nothing. Black man, get to stepping. Right? They kind of want to push that onto black women. And it's not just, of course, we know there's other factors at play. But I think that's something that is pushed on black women, too, at times. And it's like, oh, you ain't no strong black woman. You weak. Oh, no. What kind of black woman are you? And another question I have is, why isn't a black man? Well, I had this question before, but then I was like, oh, well, a black man is involved. Because I was going to ask, why isn't a black man creating and presenting this documentary? But a black man is a part of this documentary. And I think the black man may be a part of the XYZ community, and that's fine. That's cool. Um, but I'm just saying, I'm not sure um, many black men would want to be associated with that. You know and they would not want to have their image associated with that. Like I said before, imagery is very important, right? So these same black men, they do know the importance of the imagery when it comes to not being associated with the XYZ community, but all of a sudden they don't know the importance of it any other any other time. Right. All right. Um, but I do notice that, uh, as of lately at least, um, it's been more so black women coming through and advocating for black men. At least that's what's being focused on in the mainstream media. You know, like Black Lives Matter, you know, that was started by a group of black women. Uh, black men deserve to grow old, started by a black woman. Uh, we also got Tamika Mowry, who I heard about during this whole, like, uh, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor protest. But at least we can say one thing, you know, and that, you know, it's a preference, quote unquote, that's doing this. You know, Tina would be considered a preference, quote unquote. But the damage will still fall on black women, of course. Right? <laughs> of course. Um... Uh, Sway from MTV and Sway in the Morning, um, he's in the documentary, and he spoke about, um, this wasn't in the trailer, this was in an interview, kind of like a clip of an interview that um, OWN, the OWN Network posted, and Sway has said something to the effect of basically um, having the code switch, you know, while he was at MTV. And that he wore long dreads. And 
sometimes he felt like people were uncomfortable with him. So because of that, he kind of felt the need to code switch in order to, um, I guess, make people more comfortable with him. Uh, then there was another interview clip posted on um, the OWN Network's YouTube page about a guy named Leon Ford, who was wrongfully shot by a cop five times due to a case of mistaken identity, by the way. Uh, paralyzed for life, from what I hear, he received a $5 million settlement. Uh, rather, a $5.5 million settlement. The, the cop is still working and on um, a police force. Um, the guy, Leon Forrest, says that he forgives the cop, even though the cop never said he was sorry. But he said that the cop said he was sorry with his eyes. And I'll just say, we are some forgiving people. Some truly forgiving people. Now, I personally just can't imagine a white person being this forgiving to a black person if the roles were reversed. I just can't imagine that. And you will see this in this documentary, and I feel like this, again, is something that will make non-black people very comfortable. Right, very much at ease. Uh, but before I end this video, I do want to say, um, you know, go through. Um, there's going to be four episodes, and each episode has a title. So we're going to go through that right quick. So episode one is called "Black Men Are Dangerous," but we all know black men wouldn't hurt a fly. Or at least non-black people. Episode 2. Black men are absentee fathers. And they bet not. They better not. Cite that CDC study. They better not. I better not hear anything about that CDC study in this documentary. I did a whole video about that documentary and going not that document, about that study that the CDC did about, you know, black fathers. We're really fathers and black men were included within the study of fathers and them being active in the home or being in the home and things like that. I did a whole video about that and saying how basically this whole study was misquoted and taken out of context. So, they better not talk about that CDC study. But how much you want to bet they will? How much you want to bet? Episode 3. Black men devalue black women. All right, so here we go with this one. They're going to be all like, oh, we love our black kind. Oh, sorry. Oh, we love our black queens. <laughs> we love our black queens. You know, over 85% of black men are married to black queens. <laughs> you know, they're going to be misquoting that too. Saying that 85% of black men are married and married to black queens. Right. And probably half the Jews on the documentary probably aren't even married to black women. And if they are, they probably are married to the, the liar side of black women. Because that's something that we don't want to talk about either when we talk about this, uh, you know, marriage rate in the black community. It's like, OK, let's break it down even further and put in the colorism aspect in it, too. But we don't want to go there, do we? We don't want to go there. About these dudes obsession with, quote unquote, good hair. But we don't want to go there. Yeah, I ain't ready for that. Yeah, I ain't ready for that. And then the fourth and last episode is Black Men Don't Cry. So they're going to show some footage of black men crying. Wonderful. More imagery to put non-black people at ease. And to make non-black people feel safe and comfortable by seeing black men cry. Just what we need. All right.
So, that's pretty much all I gotta say about this. I've gone on for long enough. I didn't think it was gonna be this long, but then again, I just had some things to say. And sometimes it just be that way. But, thank you very much for watching this video. If you made it to the end of this video, please let me know by posting in the comment section the following comment. Black men are not victims. And as well, let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section below. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.